Louisa, tell me about Meniere's disease, please. Well, Meniere's disease is an episodic disorder where patients experience unilateral auditory symptoms like oral fullness, tinnitus and hearing loss along with episodes of vertigo that are characteristically fairly swift in onset and fairly dramatic in onset. So they're associated with vomiting and they tend to be incapacitating, lasting 30 minutes to several hours. It is thought to be due to raised in um, raised pressure within the inner ear, although that's it, that theory is not universally accepted. In the early stages, patients make a complete recovery in between the episodes, and the prognosis is quite variable, so that some patients will um, find that everything settles down quite quickly, the hearing recovers, and um, uh, everything settles. In others, the hearing loss progresses and becomes um, more advanced in a stepwise manner, and in others the episodes of vertigo become more frequent and more prominent, and eventually um, in a few cases you can end up with a fixed vestibular disorder and hearing loss. So the patient would typically present with acute and recurrent but short-lived vertigo or dizziness, Yes, that's plus right. the other associating symptoms. Yes. Louisa, what are the specific considerations for the elderly? The elderly can suffer, as, as everybody else can, with all the disorders that we've been talking about um, in this series, with BPPV, with vestibular migraine, with um, Meniere's disease, anything else that, ever, that, that we've already talked about. The challenge with the elderly, and I think GPs will recognise this from, from, from their practice, is that um, they tend to present in fairly atypical ways. So their perception of movement and dizziness is quite different, so that they will frequently not describe vertigo um, in a way that you will easily recognise that they're describing BPPV or uh, another vestibular disorder, which means that um, we're much more dependent on physical examination findings in patients, um, in elderly patients, to, to pick up those sorts of conditions. Mm -hmm. BPPV is increasingly common with age. So in any dizzy elderly patient, it is always particularly important to do a positioning test to pick that up. Um, and it's treatable, of course. Mm. The um, other thing with elderly patients is that they frequently have multiple causes mm. for their dizziness and it can be contributed to by any part of the balance system. So we have uh, vestibular disorders that we've been talking about but also um, visual problems, somatosensory problems from their diabetic neuropathy um, and also the, the brain that integrates all this information if they have small vessel disease or other um, central neurological disorders that, that they are at increased risk of reporting disequilibrium and balance problems. So um, it can frequently be a case of a number of um, relatively minor problems adding up to being one mm. large problem. These patients with Meniere's disease, what are the key characteristics, and this is how you can distinguish them from vestibular migraine and BPPV, your other big common causes of dizziness, is their unilateral auditory symptoms. Mm -hmm. And this ca defining characteristic also means that it's quite important to refer them for a specialist diagnosis when they present, because there are other things that can mimic Meniere's disease, R rare things, but they, they, they are important and those need to be explored. Um, so I would expect then that the balance service that they refer to makes a clear diagnosis and um, institutes management. Now, there are different levels of management for Meniere's disease. In the first instance, you can manage it medically, either with um, acute relief, if the uh, symptoms are infrequent, or in some cases you can use better histine, which is commonly prescribed for many as disease in this country. Some experts will use um, diuretics like benzoflumathiazide. The evidence base to support that is quite weak, um, mm. but nonetheless it's used. And some people will advocate a low salt diet. Likewise, the evidence base to support that is weak, but it is used in practice. For patients who are not managing with those sorts of therapies, there are other therapies that are used, for example, intratympanic treatments, 
of steroids or gentamicin and in very, very rare cases um, surgery can be carried out. So I think it's important that the patients understand and, and their doctors that are supporting them understand where on the treatment ladder they are and what their next step might be if the symptoms become unmanageable. Another aspect of Meniere's disease, apart from the vertigo management, is the auditory rehabilitation. Um, and these patients may well require support with managing their tinnitus and their hearing loss, which an integrated audio vestibular service should be able to provide. So will it be fair if I suspect Meniere's disease, I understand that because of its unilateral nature, I need to refer to secondary care mm -hmm. uh, for further evaluation and, and, and diagnosis. But would it, can I then prescribe the beta histine to help with the symptoms whilst they're waiting to see? I or you prefer not to? I think that's very reasonable, yes. Very yeah. reasonable. Okay. Uh, rehabilitation in Meniere's disease? Again, in the early stages of the disease, there's usually complete recovery in between the episodes. The patients are well, mm -hmm. and, in, and in those situations, rehabilitation is not so helpful. What it is useful for is patients who are experiencing symptoms in between the attacks of disequilibrium, um, imbalance, visual vertigo, head motion intolerance, and, uh, and physical rehabilitation can be very useful for those patients. Very good. And, and, and a, an integrated balance service would refer directly to the vestibular rehabilitation. Well, that would be a reasonable expectation. A reasonable expectation from that. Yeah. Thank you. How, how many, roughly from your practice, from your experience, uh, uh, how, perhaps percentage of times we get it right? We, we refer a patient suspecting many years disease. I and it turns out not to be. I just looked at the last 10 patients I had GP referrals um, with Meniere's disease. And in three of them, that was the correct diagnosis. In the other seven, I had vestibular migraine um, and benign paroxysmal positional vertigo with the, with the top other diagnoses. Which hopefully we will be able to diagnose and manage in general practice. Exactly, yes. Okay, thank you.